Does the Bible teach infant baptism? There are many religious organizations that practice something called infant baptism. But is this common practice according to the teachings of God's Word? Let's evaluate this question today during the course of this study based on the teachings of what we can read about in the pages of the Bible. In order for the practice of infant baptism to be pleasing to God, we must be able to find Bible authority for it. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, it says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Therefore, everything that we do must be done with biblical authority behind it. We are prohibited, according to passages like Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19, and Galatians 1, verses 6 through 10, we are prohibited from adding to or taking away from the things God's Word reveals. Bible authority for a thing can be established by having one of the following, a direct command, an approved example, or a necessary inference. Not only are these the necessary ingredients to have Bible authority, but they're also the necessary ingredients to, in order to know anything to be true. For instance, how can you know what the required speed limit on a road is? Generally, you know this by a direct command, when you see the signs that give the direct instructions about the speed limit. Or perhaps you're able to necessarily infer the speed from knowing what kind of road you're traveling. The same thing's true with the Bible. We only know what is approved of God when we establish Bible authority for everything that we do. Now let's put infant baptism to the test and see whether there is any kind of Bible authority for its practice. First, understand that there is no direct command to baptize infants. There are many direct commands and statements given in the Bible concerning baptism, like in Acts 2 and verse 38, in Acts 22 and verse 16, but there is not a single command or statement that directly says that infants are the proper subjects of Bible baptism. Therefore, the, pra the practice of infant baptism cannot find its Bible authority through this means. Second, there is no approved example to baptize infants. Of all the examples given of baptism in the Bible, there is not a single approved example of infant baptism. For instance, in the book of Acts, there are examples of baptism in chapters 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, 16, 18, and 19. Yet not one of these examples contain an example of infant baptism. Not even the household, not even the household baptisms are examples of, Bible, of infant baptism. For instance, Cornelius's household was baptized in Acts chapters 10 and 11. Lydia's household was baptized in Acts 16, verse 15. And the Philippian jailer's household was baptized in Acts 16, verse 3. However, there is not a single piece of evidence that forces us to conclude that there were any infants among those household baptisms. In fact, the statements that are made in those texts demonstrate to us that in, these individuals did some things that infants are incapable of doing. For instance, in Acts 16 and verse 33, it says that the jailer and all his family were baptized. And then in verse 34, it says that everyone was brought into the jailer's house. He set food before them and rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Therefore, Whoever was part of this man's household was bap and was baptized was capable of having true faith in God. Third, there is no necessary inference of infant baptism. A necessary inference is a conclusion that is inescapable. It's a forced conclusion based on the teachings of the Scriptures. However, there's nothing that would force an individual to conclude that infants are proper subjects of baptism. Instead, the teachings of the scriptures force us to conclude the opposite, that infants are incapable of doing what, what is required of those who are to be baptized, as we'll discuss here in just a few moments. While there are no Bible teachings that would force us to conclude that infant baptism is approved of God, there are a number of improper conclusions that some have made in order to justify its practice. For instance, some who believe that babies are born in sin, reach the conclusion that baptism is necessary in order for them to be cleansed from this sin. 
However, this is, a, is just one example of a false conclusion that leads to another false conclusion. The Bible teaches that infants are born sinless, as you can see in Ezekiel chapter 18 and in verse 20. Therefore, since babies are not born in sin, the conclusion that babies must be baptized for the remission of their sin is a false conclusion. It's not a necessary or a forced conclusion. In fact, there is no necessary inference from the Bible at all, one that holds true from the beginning to the end that authorizes the practice of infant baptism. So as you look at, as you think about the list of Bible authority and how to establish Bible authority, since there is no direct command, approved example, or necessary inference that practice that authorizes the practice of infant baptism, there is no Bible authority for it. To teach and practice infant baptism, then, is based on man's own religious doctrines and traditions, and it's entirely without God's approval. Now, as we continue our search of the Bible, we discover that it teaches us concerning who a proper subject of baptism is. And we need to consider these Bible teachings and make application of them to be able to know whether God approves of infants as proper subjects for, for baptism. In fact, what we'll discover is that infants are incapable of the prerequisites God has placed upon Bible baptism. Again, I encourage you to search through the entire Bible about what God says about baptism and discover for yourself that these are the conditions God has placed upon baptism. First, proper subjects of baptism have committed sin. God has commanded baptism for a very specific purpose. He said that baptism is necessary in order to be forgiven of sins or have those sins remitted. For instance, Peter commanded in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And in Acts chapter 22 and verse 16, Ananias told Saul, Now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Therefore, since baptism is necessary in order for sins to be forgiven, God does not require it until an individual has committed sin. And as I've already stated briefly al already, babies have not sinned. Therefore, they are not proper subjects of baptism. Second, proper subjects of baptism must have heard God's word. Before anyone in the Bible was baptized for the remission of his or her sins, he or she was first taught the word of God. In fact, hearing what God's word teaches comes before any of the other requirements God has placed upon salvation. Romans 10 verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Therefore, you cannot even have faith in Jesus Christ without hearing the message of the gospel. In addition, Acts chapter 18 and verse 8 records one of several examples of baptism in the Bible, and specifically it states that many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. What infant is there who is capable of hearing and understanding the message of the gospel so as to take the appropriate actions? Not a single one. Therefore, they are not proper subjects of baptism. Third, proper subjects of baptism must have believed. God requires belief for salvation. It's always a prerequisite to individuals being forgiven of their sins. For instance, Jesus said in John 8 and verse 24, Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then not only is faith in Christ necessary for salvation from your sins, but it's also a prerequisite for baptism. Again, in Acts chapter 18, verse 8, demonstrated that the Corinthians heard God's word, they believed, and they were baptized. Also, Jesus said in Mark 16, verse 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Therefore, both belief and baptism are necessary to bring about the desired result of salvation from sin. Yet infants are incapable of possessing such faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, they are not proper subjects of baptism. Fourth, proper subjects of baptism must have repented of their sins. God requires that sin be repented of in order for a sinner to be saved. Acts 17 verse 30 says that God now commands all men everywhere to repent. Furthermore, repentance must always precede baptism. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 demonstrates this and that 
uh, in, in, in order when Peter commanded, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. First, you notice that repentance was necessary in order to have the forgiveness of sins. And second, you notice that it's coupled with baptism. Therefore, not only must those who desire to be baptized have sin, but they also must repent of or turn away from their sin. Infants are not capable of either one of these. Therefore, they are not the proper subjects for baptism. Fifth, proper subjects of baptism must have confessed Jesus Christ. God requires that a confession be made in order to be saved from sin. This confession is a confession with the mouth of the Lord Jesus, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. An example of this confession being made is found in Acts chapter 8 and in verse 37. On that occasion, a man was told that he could be saved if he believed in Jesus with all his heart. He responded, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then he was baptized. However, infants are not capable of making this confession. Therefore, they are not the proper subjects for baptism. Sixth, proper subjects of baptism must choose to be baptized. Throughout the Bible, individuals always made a personal decision to be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. It was not something that was forced upon them by someone else. Go back and read each one of the passages in the book of Acts I, I mentioned previously. However, in infant baptism, someone else is making the decision for a child to be baptized. Therefore, infants are not the proper subjects of baptism. Clearly, through all six of these reasons, we have seen that infants are not the proper subjects of Bible baptism. For this reason, God did not give any Bible authority for them to be baptized. To baptize an infant is entirely a meaningless practice that only results in a baby getting wet. As we conclude the study and we think about the question, does the Bible teach infant baptism? The Bible simply does not teach infant baptism. It's entirely the creation of man. There is no Bible authority for infant baptism, and the Bible is clear in teaching that infants are not the proper subjects for baptism because they have no need for what it does and cannot fulfill the, pre the prerequisites.